Ellen Bulks is a seasoned enterprise agile expert and coach who has created positive and lasting change across organizations worldwide. Melvin guides individuals and groups through key change concepts, including operational adjustments, enterprise impact, people issues, and the day-to-day -day at work. He ex assists executives, managers, directors as they grow into new roles and models positive leadership traits, encouraging leaders to be their best. Clients he's worked with include Nationwide, Sony PlayStation, IBM, and Oxford University Press. I really tried, Melvin, to make an effort to memorize that intro, but I just couldn't get it done, man. And so if it sounded canned and, and rehearsed, I apologize. But Melvin, really looking forward to, to hearing from you. Go ahead and, and share your screen. I'll stop okay. sharing mine. Okay. And then you can begin to walk us through, walk us through your, uh, your material. All right. Fi yeah, fire away, Melvin. Give me a second. Let me get the... Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you all. So my name is Melvin Bikes. I'm going to be talking about Lean Agile Leadership. What does it mean? How do we, how do we adopt that Agile mindset? All what you're going to see in this 45 to 50 minutes is not rocket science. The biggest challenge we have from a leadership perspective is the mindset. Right? So we are, we are used to take control. We are used to tell people what to do. We are used to solutionize for them. We are used to have a lot of doers. They do based on what we tell them. Thing is, we need to move away from that. We need to move into thinkers, right? We need people to start thinking. And that's the biggest challenge. That's the biggest mindset change that we need to, to go through. It's a journey. So I hope that today I can plant some seeds, big areas to cover that I just want to plant the seed. And from there, hopefully, I will leave some exercises for you to practice. And from there, try to start your journey. Some of you maybe already are in the journey. Some of you probably are new to it. It takes time. So don't, don't lose your hope. Okay. So how and what are the different dimensions that we need to consider for a Lean Agile mindset? First of all, what does it mean to be a Lean Agile leader? What is Lean? What is Agile? So we talk about those things. But then we need to consider many other different dimensions. We need to talk about team building, right? So uh, do we have a team or do we have a group of people? We also need to talk about Agile frameworks. So I will briefly cover some of them. And I know that during the day, you will talk more into in, in, in deeply in those. We'll talk about flow, why is flow is so important and how flow can bring your team to life. And then for sure, some practices and processes over there. So let's, let's hit with it. Lean Agile mindset. Some definitions, definitely. Agile, they are simple definitions, but can we be Agile at work? For sure, right? So can we... Can we react fast? Can we be proactive rather than reactive? Can we really uh, deliver faster than we, we are uh, working these days? Definitely. Lean, can we do more with the same or less? Is it possible? For sure it is, but we need to learn and master all these things. And definitely the last one, which is mindset, right? So what is a mindset? What is a mindset, right? So that's definitely the set of beliefs we have, right? So how we make sense of the world and ourselves. How do we see ourselves and how do we see the people we interact with? Not only your team as well, you may work as leaders with other leaders as well, and that's a team as well. So do you, uh, do you work as a team? Do you work in silos? So all those sort of things we need to try to really understand and see how we can grow uh, all these concepts, okay? Takes time. Uh, you're not alone. I can tell based on all the training and coaching that I do that everybody's on the same channel. Worldwide, I'm going to be quite honest. I run training across the world and everybody's going through the same. So just need to be patient and, and you will get there. But there is only one way to change the mindset and it's you need to practice, right? So you need to lead by example. That's a big challenge in itself, okay? So what do we think about this? Is this a Lean Asha leader? Any thoughts? You're free to talk. Doesn't look like, right? Definitely, that's not what we want. Uh, we don't want to be in that situation, right? We want to have a, a better uh, way of working, if I'm honest, right? So who are Lean Asha leaders? Well, Lean Asha leaders are people who lead by example, right? So you empower your teams. Your teams need to self-organize. They need to self-manage. It doesn't mean that they don't need you, right? But your role in your team changes. Rather than command and controlling, you're going to be coaching, you're going to be mentoring, you're going to be training your team. But maybe not you, you will need to get someone to train them and that's okay, right? but that's kind of the idea behind. Okay, so that's a big change, a big shift. 
right? So think about it. A coach is not someone that gives a solution. A coach is someone that asks questions, right? So that in itself, big challenge for everybody. I mean, it happened to me when I started all this journey of being a coach. I mean, a bit of my uh, early career, I used to be a software engineer. Then I moved into project management, program management. Uh, you take control, right? Uh, you are responsible. It's your head in the game. And then you need to learn to move away from that, which is a, it's a journey to get there, okay? So what do we want? As I was saying, right? So we want to lead by example, right? That's a lean as a leader. If you don't practice what you uh, preach, it's going to be difficult also for you to understand why people are not following, right? Because you're going to take people out from their comfort zone, right? So some people are going to be comfortable with the change, some people are not. So how do we, how do we help them, right? So by practicing ourselves, understanding why they feel like they feel and why they reject change, sometimes you can help them. But if you don't do it and you don't practice it on your own, then it's going to be difficult to understand all this change. And most probably under pressure, you will go back to the old ways of work. Okay, so we need to develop our people. We need to have this psychological safety, right? So can I, can I speak? Can I say that something is not working? Can I change? Can I think? I mean, I know it sounds quite, it's not a big deal, but really, really people are used to do, not to think, right? And then the biggest challenge is, can I think? Can I say what I think, what I have in my mind? Can I solutionize? Okay, so they need to have that psychological safety. Without it, it's difficult, right? So that's kind of a big challenge for, for most of the leadership these days, right? It doesn't matter the level you are. To be at the C level, all the way up, it could be just starting as a manager or a project manager. All this is a, is a big shift in the way we think and we act, okay? Any questions there? Any, any thoughts? Can you find the leaders here? Definitely, the man here on the white, that's not a leader. That's just a consultant. He was trying to keep himself away from solutionizing for the team. He's there to answer questions just in case of knowledge, but not to manage a team, right? So that's what we want. We want an atmosphere where people collaborate, work together as a team. We're going to talk on what, on, about what it means to build a team, but that's what we want. We want people working together, helping each other, facilitating, helping our people to stand up and think. Okay, and solve problems together as a team, right? Uh, not as a group of people. Okay, so for all of this, culture is key, right? So we need to have this culture of respect, trust. I always ask leadership the, the same do you trust your team or your people? Do they trust you? That's a really important question, right? Without trust, all the rest is not going to happen. If you don't trust your people, you need to ask yourself why. If they don't trust you, we need to ask ourselves why. And how do we how we can change all these things? And then you can have all the rest. You can have happier people when they move from doers to thinkers. They start taking control, ownership. They start growing as, as individuals, right? And they grow as a team as well, right? So that's kind of really key in all this lineal transformation, right? So and let's be honest. Today I work a lot with engineers as well, different areas of engineering, from software to infrastructure, and sometimes even outside IT. And it's always the same. People, when they experiment Lean Agile mindset and when they learn about it, ah, if you don't have that and you don't offer that, they may leave your team, your company, right? And today the market is consuming a lot of resources. So it's a, it's a bit of a challenge if we don't learn how to move with, with what the market is going, okay? It's not all about money anymore. It's about people having fun and, and also working hard for sure, but having that, that sense of, of belonging, of meaning, right? And that's all uh, for a lot of people these days. So I will leave an exercise for all of you. I will ask you to try to practice. If your team has a problem, don't give them the answer straight away, right? Ask questions. I know it's hard, right? So try to avoid solutionizing for them. Allow them to find the answers, right? You can guide with a question, but no giving them the answer. It's a challenge, I would say, give a go. Remember, if you end up solutionizing for them, that's okay. Try again next time, okay? But I would say that's a good point to start, right? So rather than giving solutions, ask questions so people can find the answer themselves, right? So that means they need to start thinking. They need to start hmm, taking control. They need to self-organize, self-manage. There's a lot over there uh, that they need to learn. Don't lose your, I would say, don't lose your temper sometimes if people keep quiet. Uh, you may ask, 
why they are quiet and ask them, be honest with them, right? So I want you to, you need to explain all these things to them, right? So you cannot expect people to change if you don't have a, a quick chat with them in terms of, I'm hoping that we can change the way we work, right? If you're working this way already, listen, beautiful. If not, if all this is new for you, let your team know, right? Don't 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 try to go with that, uh, with it without letting them know. We are trying new ways of working. I'm trying to have this lean national mindset and let's see how it goes. Change happens quite fast. I'm going to be quite honest. Many times I'm giving a couple of days to prove that things work. Change, definitely. A couple of days, you can see change. For the change to stick, for your team and you, you as well not to go back to the old ways of working, that takes a little longer, right? So how long it takes, if I'm honest, I usually average six to nine months, right? So after six to nine months, people will stay with the new ways of working and the new uh, lean agile mindset. They will keep, for sure, the journey going on. But as soon as there is pressure, they will not go back to the old ways of working. They will deal with the pressure and all the all the emergencies in the new ways of working. So during that journey, you need to keep going, right? And we'll talk about frameworks, and you will see how the frameworks, agile frameworks, help you to go through all these things. But that's kind of the, the idea behind there, okay? Any questions? Any thoughts here before we move? Yeah, keep it going, Melvin. This is great. Yeah, we'll, okay. we'll, save, we'll save the questions until the okay. end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. fire away. No worries. Okay. Oops, sorry for that. So team building, this is kind of key. And again, think about it. Team building, teams, as I was saying, it's not only the people who are doing the work. If you're a team of managers, Right? Or if you are a senior leader and you have managers working for you, you have a team as well. Do they work together? If they don't, you have a bit of a problem. So you need to build your team. Okay, Doesn't matter the level. You always have a team of people working together. But we need to understand what it means to be a team. Okay, So you have a work group or you have a team. Work group, people who independently work from one another. Right, So they have individual accountability. I do my work. That's it, right? So you ask me to do something, I go and do it. That's a silo mentality approach, right? That costs many things. First of all, you have issues with knowledge because you give work to a specific person on the team based on their skills, and that's the only person who probably knows how to do that piece of work. I don't like to be in that situation, right? Because if that person takes holidays or something happens, you're in trouble, right? So I'd rather work as a team where as a group of people who moving into a team and growing to become a, a high-performing team, we work together, we are cross-functional, we learn from each other. I'm not only going to become a subject matter expert in a day, but there is a lot of repetition coming into, into our teams. doesn't matter the team, right? So it could be IT, it could be finance, it could be procurement. You have teams all over the place as a team of managers. So what we're trying to do is learn from each other. We are trying to work together. We care about the work we have going on. We care about the quality of the work, right? As I said, we, we learn from each other in terms of the skills. For sure, there is always a subject matter expert, but if that person is uh, not available today, maybe someone else on the team can, can do that work as well. It takes time to build a team, for sure, right? But uh, that's a really good time because when your team is performing, you are flying, right? All these project mentality, where most of companies are trying to move away from project into product or to stable teams, that's a big deal. Right? Think about it. Every time you have a new project, you set up a team, that team goes through many phases. When the team starts performing, you probably finish the project, disband the team, you have a new project, you create a new team. So you're constantly going through all this transformation that doesn't help much. Right? So we want to change that approach, have stable teams working for us, owning most of the products that we, we are building and supporting. Whatever the products are that you're building, or services, or whatever it is that the team is delivering, okay? So in terms of teams themselves, it's quite important to understand the dynamics inside our teams, right? So we have, from Patrick Lencioni, the, the five dysfunctions of a team, right? So as you can see, the biggest one and where everything starts is absence of trust. When there is no trust, you get into trouble. Right? If, if team members don't trust each other, if they don't trust you, you have a lot, right? So there's going to be a, the other ones, fear of conflict, lack of commitment, avoidance of accountability, inattention to results, your quality drops, value probably is not delivered as it should, you don't fly, you go really slow, 
that's, that's, that doesn't take us anywhere. So we really need to understand how we can get our teams through all of this, right? So we need to help our teams to build that trust, right? And I'm going to be quite honest, who can help our teams to build the trust? Leaders, managers, whoever is the team. If you're a team lead, you can help your team to go through that. Some, some frameworks like Scrum, they have some certain roles that play that or, or help the team with that. Sometimes you don't have that role, but someone needs to play it. So we, the role I'm talking sorry about is Scrum Master, right? But uh, as a manager or a team lead or, or a director, I can guide and I can help my team with all of these things. Okay, so it's an interesting book. I will advise you, maybe interested on in having a go with it with Patrick Lencioni and uh, the five functions of a team. All teams go through stages. Okay, doesn't matter what type of team you are. As I said, everybody goes through this. Forming, definitely, we are like we are together. Right today, we are forming. If we are were to work together, we don't know each other yet. We keep ourselves quiet, probably won't not ask many questions. After maybe a couple of weeks or maybe a bit more, slowly we start storming, right? Storming, huh, we are starting to establish ourselves in the team. We want to have our say. Now we know each other, but we may disagree, not in the best way. It takes some time. Some things pass through storming quite nice. I have had teams storming for many, many, many months. At some point, that mentality stops and we move. Right from storming into norming. Norming, we start getting more unity as a team. We start evolving until we, we get into performing. Performing, your team is flying. <clears throat> Nothing stops your team from performing, going back to storming. But once a team achieves kind of performing state, then you may go into storming because anything can bring a, a team into storming. I mean, at the end of the day, we are humans. We all have our bad and good days. But coming out from storming for a team that is performing is, is not going to take long, right? It's just a matter of realizing we are storming, coming together, having a chat, trying to understand what is not helping us uh, and is getting into this storm, and then we will sort it out. Why? Because we trust each other, we have been working together for a while, and now we know how to resolve problems internally, okay? So that's kind of key for any team, right? As I said, any type of team, okay? Put it this way. If you like sports, the same applies for a sport, a team playing a sport, any sport. Right? When there is a new, <laughs> there is a, a new team, even if you buy the biggest stars on whatever sport you have in a team, they may storm. And if they storm, they're not going to win any cups or any, any championship, right? So that's the reality. Okay. So I leave it there for you to uh, think about it. My advice is if you have a team something that you can practice. Talk to your team about the forming, storming, norming, performing. You have the slides over there. You can Google this. You will find a lot about uh, these stages. And ask the team, where are we? Right? That's a really good exercise. Why? Because they will let you know. I mean, I do that all the time. Right? And then the question is, hmm, how do we move from wherever we are, one level up? Right? And again, if we have issues, let's resolve them. Right? At some point, as a manager, you will need to sometimes direct things and you will need to really get the team to go through this. Once the team starts moving from storming into norming, performing, your role dilutes a lot. You're coaching, you keep an eye, you facilitate, but most of the time the team can deal with all these things on their own. Okay? It doesn't mean that they don't need you anymore, but they know where they are now and they you facilitate more, you direct, but the team just fly with that. Okay? So I would say... Go for it. As I was saying earlier, you need to practice these things. So best way is to give a go. Okay. If not, we can talk about things for days. We can run a, a month training. The next day, you go back to the old ways of working. So best way to learn all these things, more than me talking here, <laughs> is for you to give a go. That's, that will be my advice. I'm not going to talk much about Azure Frameworks. I will just give you a, a, a quick introduction to them, and I will leave it there for the rest of the day. Right? There are Agile. Uh, so why Agile frameworks? Well, Agile frameworks are quite good. Why? Because they give us a chance to experiment all these things. Right? They're going to take us out of the comfort zone. Right? They help. Agile frameworks. That's it. I mean, I know that there are Agile frameworks like Scrum. They were created for software engineering, or or maybe Kanban, which uh, was created by Taiki Ono in Toyota. We have safety says. Agile frameworks are not about 
the technology, IT, or Agile frameworks are to help people to learn to work together. Simple as that. You have a team, the framework, whatever framework you choose, will help your team to learn how to work together, collaborate, support each other. Why? Because they have principles, they have practices, there are roles and responsibilities. You have ceremonies happening, like, for example, the, the, the one that I would recommend the most is maybe the retrospective, right? So we come together as a team, at least maybe once a month, and we discuss what's working as a team, what we can do better, okay? There are always things we can improve. So that cycling going on helps people to get into these new ways of working or habits, right? Some teams like to have a daily stand-up or a daily scrum. That's okay, but having that help because it helps the team to come together, to discuss, to make sure that we are all self-organizing, self-managing. So there are many things there you will see in national frameworks that help your team to become a team, right? That's why they are so... That's so useful. For sure, they will help you to fail fast. Failing is okay. I would say the same. Fail fast and small. Don't fail big. I mean, we all fail, right? So, and then definitely you will have your feedback loops, loops, right? In many different ways. So these frameworks are there just to help any team, any company, enterprise to move into this lean agile uh, ways of working. Okay. That's kind of the idea and master the mindset. Okay. You have frameworks at different levels. You have framework for, for teams and you have framework for enterprises. For teams, the basic ones are Kanban, Scrum, you have a stream programming, and then you have combinations of above, right? So you have combinations, Scrum ban, I myself mixed Scrum and Kanban and came with Kanban ITSM, which is a, a mix of Scrum that apply for IT service management, for example. And I know there are many, and today you're going to talk about many more, okay? At the enterprise level, you have a scale agile framework, you have less, Nexus, discipline agile, a lot of them, right? So for sure, these enterprise frameworks use the framework for teams applied to a, to, at a scale, right? But that's kind of the idea behind that. Okay, so I'm not going to kill you much. Ideally, it's just to, uh, if you never care about them, I will leave, uh, leave for you a couple of slides. And from there, you will need to experiment, okay? So... If you ask me which framework I should go with from tomorrow, let's say today we have this uh, workshop and tomorrow I want to start to practicing or, or trying to give a go with one of the frameworks. Um, I mean, have two options there. I mean, how to start? And again, I'm sure that today you will talk more about these things, but uh, you can go with Kanban. Kanban is the most basic framework. The only thing doesn't have any roles or responsibilities. It's just visualize your workflow and try to understand the different steps that the work uh, that your team is doing uh, goes. The easy one is to do in progress done. Simple as that. Why and when to use Kanban? Well, if your team is doing a lot of BAU, maybe even over 30%, I would say probably even over 20%. That means there is a lot of change happening every day, a lot of priorities changing every day. Kanban is more appropriate. If your team is working on a project and they can work without interruption for maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks, then Scrum is more appropriate. But again, you can always move up and down from one, from Kanban to Scrum or from or any other frameworks you have. The best way to learn which one works for you, simple. Choose one, give a go, and from there, get together with your team, maybe every two, three weeks or a month. Is this working for us? Yes or no? And then from there, you will evolve. Okay, that's the best way to, to start. Yeah. Just moment. to jump in, can you, um, real quick, Melvin, what does BAU stand for? Uh, yeah, business as usual. Sorry for that. Yeah, no problem. Right, so, yeah, I mean, think about it. <clears throat> we have project work, but then we may have a lot of incidents that we need to deal or small requests. So we need to support the business, whatever our team is doing, right? So it depends on, on the type of team you have. Uh, so... You know, if you're working, for example, with finance, I mean, there is probably not a lot of project work, but there are many, many requests coming into the team. Or the same if you have a procurement team or maybe an infrastructure team. If you have a software team, probably they are more lucky in terms of they don't have that much business as usual. They may have incidents every now and then, but that's maybe 10 or 20% of the team capacity. The rest, they can de dedicate to project work or to product, supporting the products they have, but you can work for a longer period. Make sense? Yep. I'm not going to go much into detail in Scrum. As, as I said, it's not the, the idea, it's just planting the seed. But as you can see, you have some roles like product owners, Scrum masters, you have a team, you have some 
backlogs from a product backlog where we have all what the team is is, is going to be working on. You don't have uh, you you didn't have a sprint backlog, which is a subset of the team backlog. That's what we plan. We go to a planning session, uh, an hour or two, where we plan the next iteration, that iteration being a week up to a month. And from there, we agree on, okay, these are the things or tasks or, 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 or work that we're going to be doing for the next iteration. And then we start what we call sprinting or iterating, right? So every day we have a daily stand-up, the team come together, not to report to a manager, which is quite interesting. The team come together to plan who is working on what and if they have anything stopping or blocking them. Right? And then as a manager, you will be like, okay, I know you have a, something stopping you. Let me help. Let me remove the blocker. In the meantime, the team keep working. Okay. At the end of a sprint or the, the iteration, the team will come together to show the product they were building, whatever that product is. And then after that, yeah, that's an hour usually. And then after that, they have an hour retrospective where they discuss what went well, what we can improve, and the cycle starts again. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> Not the plan for, for me to cover all this, but as you can see, a simple framework that is quite effective. There is a lot online that you can find. More than happy to help you if you're interested. But yeah, it worked quite well. Doesn't matter if you're a software team or not. If you're a team working on, 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 on a product or a service or something that you're building, even if it is a house and you are not going to be interrupted for, for a period of time being from a week up to a month, then Scrum works quite well. Alternative to Scrum, you have Canva, right? So simple, no roles, no ceremonies, just visualize your workflow, limit work in progress, and improve flow, right? So how you visualize your workflow, you have a Kanban board. We'll talk about that in the next slide, right? So you have a tool, okay? So with top left. So that's, that's kind of the idea. That's the that's idea, uh, Kanban. Simple, really powerful. The biggest challenge I have these days, and I have been having for a long time now, is that sometimes people believe that Kanban boards are quite silly. Why we need to visualize our work? Why we need to use post-it notes? And I mean, these days we are lucky. We have so many different tools. In the past, we used to use a lot of post-it notes, big walls full of post-it notes. These days, it's all electronic, which is quite good and easy to, to manage. But that's the point. People don't seem to, to see a lot of value on it. It does change your whole team dynamic. You want to trust. You want to create trust. You want to have visibility. That's the tool, right? So Kanban. Why? Because it, the Kanban board will visualize and it will help your team to start self-organizing and self-managing. Once people see what the others are doing and how long it's taking for them, as a manager, you just help your team with priorities, remove blockers. That's it. The rest, the team will take care, right? So even if someone is not pulling and someone is maybe playing a bit monkey, the team will address the behavior, right? So it just change the whole dynamic. You don't need to be spoon feeding your team. You just agree on what is the highest priority. And that will be at the top of the queue uh, on the team backlog. And then from there, the team will pull, right? So it's a simple but quite powerful tool. Okay, we'll talk more a bit more about it in the next slides, but that's kind of the, the idea behind there. So, what to practice? Simple. Have a chat with your team. You have these slides, and I'm sure that during the day you will talk about other frameworks or, or, or and give a go. Right. So, my advice would be, if you are going to wait for the perfect moment for this to happen, it will never happen. I'm saying this because I'm always told like, oh, we don't have time now. Oh, can we do this later? Next month, next quarter. This is not going to stop what your team is doing. This is going to accelerate what your team is doing. This is going to bring visibility to your team. This is going to help you to manage flow. So once you manage flow, you will start flying. So my advice would be just go ahead. Rather spend an hour or two, explain your team what it means, and from there, start practicing. It's not going to be perfect for sure. Don't worry, you will get better at it, okay? So that will be my advice. And again, you don't know where to start. Start with Kanban. From there, we can move to any other frameworks. Okay, that's kind of the, the idea. You can always move up and down or, 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 or side with frameworks. It's, it's not a problem. Right? We re, you can adopt, right? So you can adopt ceremony from one set framework to the other. Right? So that works quite well as well. Right? Some teams that do Kanban, they have daily standards. Perfect. Right? Some teams, they do a hoc planning. Perfect. So whatever works for your team, that's the best way to go, okay? And uh, yeah, that will be the idea with all these Azure frameworks. I know you will talk more about these things later today, so I'm going to leave it there. The idea, as I said, is to plant the seeds so that you can start then watering those seeds by experimenting and practicing uh, all these things on, on your own.
In terms of improving processes in the standard, I mean, reality is there is a lot of waste. Okay, we'll talk more about waste, but how do we how do we improve our processes and standards in a second? Ideally, this is kind of a normal. I mean, you let me know, but for usually six hours of effort or value, you may spend seven weeks or even longer, right? So how do we know where or what to improve? Well, try to identify the delays. Where do you have the delays, right? So this is from a request until you deliver the request or whatever are the steps that you're following. Where do we have delays? How do we improve our processes? Why we have those delays? How do we how do we improve? So we need to try to map these things. Best way to do it, get the people working on this different, if you have many teams working on these steps, or if this is your team's flow, get together, discuss. Hey, what's going on? What happened? How do we improve it? Why things get stuck? Why it takes so long to get moved from, from one step to the next one? How do we improve that? Right? So once you do kind of a value stream mapping, you will understand where your delays are, and from there you can start improving your process. Okay. In terms of standards, that's usually moving a bit with definition of done, improving your team qualities. Definition of done is quite important, right? Because it helps us to really focus on what are the standards and process we have. How do we follow them? Right? It's just doing our work. No, it's not. Right? And these are just two examples of what we call definition of that. Right? But you have many others. If you have a definition of that, then you have technical there. Doesn't matter what team you are, you have technical there. Uh, the quality of your work is not going to be a good. Uh, people follow different standards. Everybody has a different understanding of how to do the work. So when we come together as a team and we start having our definition of that, uh, setting up our standards, improving our standards, then we standardize and the quality will improve. Everybody follows the same standards, the same ways of working. For sure, they're not going to be written in stone. We need to definitely keep working on them, keep evolving, improving them, and you will get into a, into a better place with your team, right? So your quality will go up, uh, your flow as well. So it's quite important that we, we keep an eye on these things, okay? Again, these are just examples. If you are unsure, please let me know after this, uh, this day or, or later today. You can Google definition of that, and you will find many over there. Nothing that I'm talking here is, is magic. It's all in Google, in, 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 the, in the internet is, is there. Most of companies follow these things and works quite well for everybody. So it's just a, a matter of finding what works for you, defining your own definition of that, starting with the basics, and from there, evolve your definition of that as you go with your team. Okay? So, yeah, how we can practice this, identify some delays with your teams, you know, then run this workshop, this value stream, choose one delay, brainstorm some solutions, run an experiment, see how you can resolve it, and then do it again. Okay? Maybe standardize it uh, and then try to, from there, keep evolving and keep finding the list, right? So that's, that's the idea behind. I mean, <laughs> think about it. A lot of times, all these delays are politics or we work as in a silo, right? So you may be from delivery, maybe you're working with operations or maybe you're working with security. And remember I was saying earlier today, at that level, security lead or director, uh, delivery director, Operational director, they are a team. If they don't work as a team, they're not going to be able to improve flow or improve. So you need to work together even at that level to improve end to end, right? So if not, you're a silo and you have all these delays. And at the end of the day, you impact your customers, right? So that's not what we want. But and you make, I'm going to be quite honest, you make your people life miserable because people get quite tired on all this. We know this is a process and you know, it's really difficult to get work done here, right? So you don't want to be in that place. So your teams can't let you know the problem they have on the ground. At your level, you can help to remove those blockers, okay? And improve those things. So there we go. Definitely, I'm going to be quite honest. All these change we are talking about will not happen if from a leadership perspective, we are not, not open to change. Your team may be able to change. They may be able to improve the way they work. Uh, without even telling you, sometimes happens, some managers are like, oh, yeah, that's okay. They are doing some scrum or come, and I don't know what that means, but they are happy with that. Mm, that shouldn't be like that, right? You need to understand what it means. You need to help your team, right? But the change across the organization or the enterprise or your company wouldn't happen if you're not supporting it from a leadership perspective, right? So that's kind of key, okay? I work with many customers where 
we are doing a bottom-up change, uh, it's painful, right? Because now teams are starting to lose momentum. They manage to change a lot, but we are reaching the ceiling of really command and control and leadership at really high level. That doesn't help. So we need to move away from those things. And we're trying to get there to talk to them, but they are not buying, right? So they don't buy. Change doesn't happen. Now some people are starting to leave. You know, you told me this was going to be a good change and it's not going anywhere, right? So you, you lose that momentum and then you get into a bad place. So we need to be able to change that mindset from, from our perspective of leadership. I'm sure you're going to come back to more frameworks later, and, but yeah. Visualizing flow. This is kind of key for many things. First of all, we're talking about being lean, doing more with the same or less. You can. Flow is, is key for this, okay? So how do we and why we need to visualize flow? I mean, think of this. If this, this is coffee shop, right? So you can count more or less or guess what is the work in progress over there. And you can easily see, yes, they have a bit of an issue, right? Same thing happened here, but how much work in progress we have, we can keep an eye, we know what's going on, but what happened here? And let's be honest, what happened today where people are working remote and they are, you know, we are all at home most of the time. So how do we know what's happening? How do I know what my team is working on? How do, how do I help my team? How do I help my team to deliver? So that's not so easy. So there is an easy way, right? And that's what we're talking about, Kanban boards. Kanban boards help with visibility and that transparency. The Kanban board will help you as a leader to see what your team is working on, to guide them in terms of priorities and direction. So once you visualize what your team is, is doing, that's when everything starts changing for you and for your team. But I, I'm, I'm working many, many, many managers who they used to be, for example, a, a team member. They used to be someone on the team, someone senior, who become a manager. And they struggle in many different aspects. First of all, the team doesn't see them as a manager. They see them as a, someone else on the team, right? So they find quite hard to even pass work to the team. So what is the easy way to change that behavior? Come on board. What's the role of this manager? Sort out the to-do column based on what the business is asking you or your team to work on. Sort out that in terms of priorities. What's the team show? Quite simple, pull from the top. Whatever is at the top of it to do, that's the highest priority to work, right? So from there, the whole dynamic of the team changes, right? So you don't command and control, you don't assign work to your people on the team, they are self-organizing and self-managing. They are pulling the work into in progress once they are free from whatever they were working before. I always say the same here, right? So <laughs> small letters, if you see, uh, if you do, let's say you haven't, you don't have a common board and you decide after today to create one, Remember, once you visualize what your team is doing, don't go mental with them. Take it easy because what you're going to see are many anti-patterns. Many people working on things that are not a probably a high priority, people not even working on stuff that is on your Kanban board. You will probably find that they were doing something that you were not even aware. Many team dynamics. So rather than losing your patience with them, try to help them. Ask why you're working on that. How can I help you? Because this is a priority. So use the Kanban board to guide and direct your team. Okay, that will be my advice. I'm saying this because I see it all the time. Yeah? And I always tell managers, right? So once you visualize what your team is doing, call me for a coffee and we address the behavior from there. Okay, so I would say that's that's a, it's quite simple tool. You will see change immediately. The tool is not about the post-it notes. Look for anti-pattern. Right? And I will give you on, on the end of this section some questions you want to ask yourself, right? So those anti-patterns are going to burn your eyes once you see them. Then you can start addressing your team behavior, okay? So good thing is you have top left, right? So I know you have a full session there where you will be able to identify what your team is doing and many anti-patterns more, okay? So I leave that for later, but uh, that will be the idea, okay? So... We are going to do an exercise. I believe that will be a good one. So you can do it with a pen and a paper, or you can do it with, with your laptop. You can open your notepad. I need all of you to write six names. I don't care the names you're writing. It's a, quite an interesting exercise based on all what we are talking about. And you can do it with your team as well later. Six names. I give you 
20 seconds to write six names. You can copy the names I have on the screen. On the screen, that will, that make it easy, and I will let you know what we need to do. Do we have six names? Yep, I got six names. Six kids, so it makes it easy. Yep. <laughs> okay, everybody. So don't start doing the exercise yet. Let me show you what we're going to do, and then we're going to time it, and we will talk about it. So what we're going to do is we are going to write the names again, but in a different way. First, we are going to write all the first letters for each name. Then we're going to write second letters, third letters, and so on until you finish writing the names. As I said, don't, don't do the exercise yet. So first all the first letters, then all the second letters, third letters, and so on. Some names you finish earlier because they have less letters. Some names take a little longer. So what we're going to do is we're going to time it. Okay, so let me open my browser quickly. And what I want you to do is when you finish writing the names in this way, you need to say done. Say it loud so we can we can hear everybody saying done. So we are going to run the exercise. It shouldn't take more than 40 seconds and we'll see what happens. Ready to go? Are we clear on the exercise? Remember to say done. So I expect many dance, okay? Not only one or two. So ready? Let's go. Done. Done. Oh, it's not you guys are cheating. How, how are you doing that so fast? <laughs> well, don't worry. They are cheating. We'll find out fast. Don't worry. <laughs> We were just writing the first letters, right? Or did I get No, the first letter, no. You need to rewrite the names. First oh. letter, second letter, I third letter, and so on. Okay. okay. You need to rewrite the whole entire name, but in this way. First all the first letter, then all the second letters, and so on. Yeah. Done. Done. Okay. So let's stop it. If you haven't finished, don't worry. And if you have misunderstood the exercise, I'm sorry for that. It took some time to write these na the names in this way, right? So what happened here? I mean, did anybody make any mistakes? Misspellings? Normal? Yep. No? No. Okay. So happens, right? So what happened in your brain? We start working on one name. We stop. Context switching. Exactly. Right? So we are content switching. Right? So that's what we do with our teams. But this is just writing names, which is a simple task. When we are working for more complex things, we start working on something. We stop. We need to refocus our brain. Start thinking on a new piece of work. That takes five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So that slows us down. And then we start again, getting focus. And maybe after an hour or two, we stop, or even sometimes half an hour, we stop because we have a new priority. So we are constantly starting and stopping. That creates waste, that stress everybody, uh, right? So we work on too many things at the same time. And at the end of the day, it's not efficient, okay? Um, how long do you think it will take to write the names as you wrote them the first time? Which is, you write the whole entire first name, then you write the whole entire second name, and so on. Should we go faster or slower? What do you think? Faster. Much faster. Much faster. So let's give a go. Let's write the names as you wrote them the first time. So the whole entire first name, the whole entire second name, and so on until you finish writing all the names. Remember to say done when you finish, okay? Done. 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 Um, um. Much faster, right? So imagine how much, as I was saying earlier, right? Can you do more with the same or less? Yes, if you control flow. So how you control flow? A Kanban board, right? Kanban board, definitely. Let me work in progress. Work on one thing until you finish. For sure, let's be honest. Uh, if you have a 10 days piece of work, nobody can work for 10 days without being interrupted, right? So uh, you will say the same. One person on your team working for 10 days, the lead time, even there for a day, lead time could be maybe 15 days or 20. But if you break it down into smaller chunks and you have a team, not a work group, you have a team of people working together, while the effort probably is still 10 days, you can probably deliver it in five or six days. Not all can be done in parallel, I agree, but a lot of things. Right? So by working as a team, you're more efficient and you control flow, you fly. Okay? Quite simple, quite powerful, quite fast to start seeing all this change, but... Yeah, you need to practice it, right? So that will be my advice. You will talk later about Kanban boards and so on. So let me go through this. But yes, right? So we want to understand our team. We want to help our team. We want to balance our team. So metrics are not to punish teams or people, right? So they are held there to help us understand anti-patterns and improve your team, right? So you have, again, I'm not going to go much deep, but you have tools like cumulative flow where you can understand your bottlenecks, your lead time, Right? You can understand how long things take from one state to the other. Right? You can have 
understand, uh, for example, your team, how it's balanced. As in this case, this was a data center team I worked many, many years ago, right? Where there was even the manager trying to do tickets because they were not able to cope with the queue, right? A lot of the knowledge and content. While the other people were uh, quite experienced as well, they were new in the company. So there was only one person trying to fire fight with everything, right? So we balance the team, right? And we have a manager not doing more hands-on. Right? We balance the team in terms of the person who had the, the most skill and knowledge, make sure that the rest of people knew how to do the work. We hired them for a reason, but this person was so busy that he never had a chance to. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. Okay, uh, oops, sorry for that. You have throughput or team velocity chart, average amount of tickets that your team can close, average. Some tickets are five minutes, some tickets are a couple of days, but that will help to understand that flow and understand and help your team. Can you change? How your team works. This was a service desk team, a customer I have. I still work with them every now and then. This was before Kanban. This was the, the lead time for requesting incidents. And you can see how things change after Kanban. When we start controlling flow, they move from average 200 hours to less than 50. Right? So there is a lot that you can achieve. Right? This is another company, right? averages of open incidents. They were open for, every, for ages until we start controlling our queues. Right? So what you can practice from here? Well, content switching. You have a Kanban board. Is my team working on too many things at the same time? Are they working on the right priorities? Are they helping each other? Are you assigning work always to the same person based on skills or because that's a higher performer? Don't assign work to people. Allow the team to self-organize. Pick from the top. Oh, I don't know how to work on this. Well, find someone on the team who can help you. Allow your people to, to pair. Right? Do you have people cherry picking? I mean, that happens a lot, right? So we have people cherry picking. I only work on the tickets I know or I like. The rest, and if there are no tickets, then I don't do. Right? Do you have bottlenecks in knowledge? Right? Are there any delays? So many questions that I want you to, once you have your command board in place, think about these things, right? This will come to you in your eyes like, whoa, what happened here? That's what I was saying earlier, right? Take it easy, okay? I believe I am almost past a bit, but any questions, any any thoughts? Any? Yeah, Melvin, let me let me chime in right away and just first of all say thank you. I do want to open it up for we have maybe seven minutes or so for for questions. Yeah. If if you throw questions in the chat, I'll make sure to get those to Melvin. And so while you're thinking of your questions, if you have them, just a couple of things, Melvin. It's always I've always thought that the hardest time for a speaker to speak is like first thing in the morning and being the first one. And so you, you nailed it, hit it out of the park. And, and uh, I did say that you were going to give us a really broad picture of the world of agile. And you certainly did that in a really amazing way. So while people are thinking of, of questions, potentially just a couple of things for me stood out from, from what you presented Melvin in a, in a really positive way. And, and I wonder if this is, I'm just looking and thinking back to some of the things that people were looking forward to in the summer and they were talking about calm and, and, and connection and, and stuff like that is mm -hmm. you, you highlighted a really important thing that our, our priorities change constantly. Yep. And, and the whole idea of, of the frameworks that you, that you presented is how do we, it answers the question, how do we handle it when we make plans, but then those plans change and then mm -hmm. priorities change. And so mm -hmm. I really appreciate the fact that you highlighted that. And then the other thing that, that stood out was the idea is, as leaders, and sometimes this is really, really hard for us, is to understand where we are in the process of, of leadership. You talked about the, the forming, norming, storming, performing, which was a really helpful picture, is the importance to, to sit down with our teams and talk about where we're at. Mm -hmm. which can be a really challenging thing sometimes, especially one, we might not be necessarily comfortable doing that, uh, but we have to get there. Yeah. And two, we're so busy that sometimes it's hard for us to sit down and plan a, a workshop, like you said, uh, to be able to go through this stuff and get a, a collective understanding. So really appreciate the, the, the way you highlighted that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, the workshops, uh, I know people are like, oh, we don't have time for all of these, but... If you don't have time, you never get better and never improve. So I know the feeling because every so the same. Right now is not the best time. Listen, there will never be a best time, right? Yeah. So and I know that an hour is a lot. Well, an hour is a lot 
this will speed up your team to a point that an hour will be nothing, right? It will be really fast for them to do work once you put all these things into practice. But if you never do it, then you're always, you know, wasting time and money around. Yeah. And that's not efficient, right? Yeah, that's right. Melvin, Jason has a, a really good question here. Maybe you can address this, please. So the yep. question is, looking at the team accountability, which you talked about, yep. uh, how does that integrate to individual accountability? Yeah, I mean, uh, and most of companies are trying to change that, right? So if you always price individuals, then you have silos on the team, right? So a lot of companies these days are trying to price the teams, right? So yes, we have our career path and everything, but there is also being part of a team and there is also the team performance, right? So that's where most of companies are trying to go these, these, these days. We need a challenge with that and they need to buy. But yes, if not, you end up having silos and you have a lot of you know, selfishness, which is not what you want, right? That's well, uh, this, this is wrong. In my experience with Agile 2 is that teams self-discipline themselves. Yes, for sure. And that's, and that's one of the agile principles is that mm -hmm. is that teams will self-regulate themselves. And if there's somebody who is is not carrying their weight, the team mm -hmm. will, will deal with it internally. For sure. They will. Yes, definitely. That's the transparency, the visibility. Right. Um, I thought you were asking from a company perspective. I mean, many companies where they're trying to do to even promote more all these uh, mentalities, trying to uh, rather than focusing on because. At the end of the day, we are humans, right? You, you care about yourself and yes, you try to be part of a team, uh, but you need to also help that mentality to, to, to happen, right? So, uh, and that's why um, many companies are trying to slowly push into what is a team performance rather than just people performance. But definitely I agree with you. I mean, the team will self-regulate and self-manage. I mean, and, and as I was saying earlier, the team will kick out people who are underperforming, right? They, you can give people a chance and so on, but at some point they will like, we did all what we can and you're not playing uh, or you're not part of the team, well, there is not much. So yeah, the team would self-adjust. Transparency, that's uh, key. That's why you want to visualize things because that transparency is where things are starting to change, right? Um, right. You're, passing, you're passing the team to self-organize and self-manage. You facilitate, but the camera more is, is usually the, the, the place to start with it, right? That's right. when I they're seeing everybody's behaviors. Yep. I know even some companies have gone to the extent of like they've done away with like titles like junior, senior and things like that. Mm -hmm. And they'll have just like developer or systems engineer. And because when you start forming a team, teams tend to the pe people who are leaders and technical leaders, they'll, they come forward just naturally. And you don't ever want to limit anybody mm -hmm. from doing work based on a title. No, definitely. Yes, I agree with you. And yes, and, and that's a power point, right? Some people are open and they will uh, straight away go and try to change. Some people will not be happy. So that you have people sometimes they take longer. It doesn't mean that they don't want to change. They don't want to change in the future, but right now they're probably not ready. So in the team, you will always have, that's why you go through all these stages, right? So there's people who are ready to change, people who are maybe observing what others are doing. I don't feel confident or I don't, I feel unhappy. You're taking people out of the comfort zone. Right. One thing is a doer, tell me what you want to do, and I will do it for you. The other thing is, well, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the priority. Then as a team, you sort it out. Oh, what happened here? I mean, I have many times, you know, helping manage people coming around and saying, oh, tell me what you want me to do, and I will do it for you. No. Nope. Uh, oh, but I already give you the, the, the priority, right? So just pick from the top. And that only that just upset a lot of people, right? So, yeah, some people are quite straight away, straight forward, sorry, and some people are not. So... We need to be patient in that sense as well, right? So that's why I was saying take six to nine months to get the team to get in a place where they are self-managing and self-organizing, right? Well, Melvin, that, this was amazing. I'm going to bring this particular time in the schedule to an end just to keep on track. Yep, but um, I, I know what's going to happen is, is as what you've said sinks in, more questions are going to arise, yep. uh, which is amazing. And the idea is that you alluded to this, Melvin, is that the speakers that are coming up are going to be able to start filling in the, the blanks here. And, that's, and that's the idea. Yeah. yeah, to begin to answer some of the questions that you've caused us to, to ask. And so, again, really appreciate it, Melvin. Thanks for getting us started here. Thanks, everyone, for chiming in in the way that you did. And thanks again, Melvin. Thank you.